Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and in this video I'll talk about how to add in different types of special effect images and video files such as these to a Blender scene as well as how to use the new mesh to volume feature which I am super stoked about. I won't be covering particle systems though as that's just a whole other ball game. Anyway, let's get started. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll note that I primarily use Blender for illustration work and in a lot of my paintings, there's often need for some special added effects on top of my illustrations, such as a sun or lens flare, holographics, fog, atmosphere, snow, debris, and so on. A lot of these things I actually add into my Blender scene instead of adding them in post-render. And you might be asking, uh, why? Well, my reason is, when trying to find a good composition or a shot, having these elements already in the scene to kind of move around, scale up and down and so on can actually really help you figure things out, especially if you're a visual thinker like I am. I just like seeing changes happen in real time. So the first step is to head over to preferences and under add-ons hook the import images as planes add-on which ships with every version of Blender so you should have it. Let's start with the easiest example which is transparent images. Blender pretty much does all the work for you so you just go to file, import images as planes and choose your transparent image. I am choosing some runes and as you can see the edges here are a bit glitchy so if that happens to you you can add in just an RGB curves node or a hue saturation value node, it all depends on what you want. And for the RGB curves node you can just move either corner up and down to get it completely black or a completely white. So the alpha here is connected to the alpha slot which is what is making the transparent background transparent. <laughs> You also need to make sure that under your shader settings, your blend mode is set to alpha blend. If you don't want your plane to cast shadows, set the shadow mode to none. The benefits of this being a plane is that you can actually enter edit mode, subdivide it a bunch of times, and select whatever you want to cut out, so let's say these two bits. Press P for separate and choose selection. Now what you can actually do is move these pieces independent of each other. This could for example be used on a double door where each half of the rune circle is etched onto each door. Okay, now let's make it glow. In order to do that we need to use an emission shader but lo and behold the emission shader doesn't have an alpha node that we can feed the alpha connection into. To get around this we add in a transparent shader a mix shader and mix both the emission and transparent shader together. We can actually now feed the alpha node into the factor and connect the mix shader to surface and voila! <laughs> Under emission you can choose the strength of the glow and also the color. And just like before you can subdivide it a bunch of times and with proportional editing turn on up here. Let's choose the middle portion scroll up until we get our desired size and pull out the shape. You can make some really cool shields and effects this way. So that's transparent images covered. What about images with black backgrounds for example? This works similarly but instead of having the alpha go down to the alpha we're going to feed the color into the alpha instead. This is because black works as a mask, so it'll mask out everything that's black and leave the brightest part alone. In my lens flare example, the flare wasn't bright enough, so I used the same setup as the glowing runes instead, but just fed the color node into factor instead. If we repeat this process for the snow image that I have, we get this effect. We can even duplicate with Shift D or make an instance with Alt D of the plane move it further back and if you have some camera animation it'll look like the snow is moving in a parallax kind of way which is pretty cool. 
And the best thing is, these planes take practically zero processing power, so you can literally alt the instance them all around your scene, and it will only compute the first plane, which is just one polygon, basically. Also, did you know that you can do the same with video files with black backgrounds? This blew my freaking mind when Ian Hubert introduced me to this technique, but you can basically just import a video file through import images as planes and just use the same setup as before. By the way, you can copy paste notes if you didn't know that. <laughs> now, if we play this animation, how freaking cool is this? Again, you can duplicate or instance this all around your scene and it won't take much processing power even if it's a video file. Just make sure to offset each individual copy down here and make it cyclic if you so wish. You can also scale the images as much as you want or subdivide and warp it like you would the glowing runes. There are just so many possibilities. Also, to any of the black background images and videos, if you want them to interact with lights in a scene, for example this sunlight, you can change the emission shader to a translucent shader instead, and it will have shadows and light cast upon it. Emission basically just ignores all lights in the scene, so it really just kind of depends on your need. Last image example that I want to show you is a bit tricky. Normally I'd stay away from white backgrounds, but sometimes you just find a really good image, so here I'm using a fire image as an example. This node setup is a bit more complicated, but basically I mixed an emission shader with a transparent shader again, but for the factor I inverted the original color of the image to make it black. Without altering any colors, this is how that looks. The colors came out looking very unpleasant, so I decided to add in a color ramp, manually find some colors I liked, and added in a second color ramp after my invert node to manually kind of just adjust the edges and the strength of the fire, which can also be done in the emission shader if you want. If you want to try different color combinations, all you need to do is just duplicate the color ramp node, change the colors, and just replace the old one. You can probably see some visual glitches on the sides, so if that happens, press tab on the object. You can head into the UV editor, and while hovering over the editor, just scale down the image slightly. Oh, and last thing, if you hide everything else in the scene and just have your imported planes, you can render these out separately. Just make sure you have transparent checked under film in the render properties tab first. Okay, now for the fog and atmosphere example. If you want something really quick and dirty, I recommend using a cube or a plane and creating an emission shader for it. Instead of feeding emission into surface, feed it into volume instead. Now you can change the color and you can adjust the strength so you can make it thinner and more transparent if that's what you're after. This is great for far background stuff, so if you have a large scene and need some more separation between your midground and background, or foreground and midground, adding these in can be very quick and easy and doesn't really take much computing power. However, if you need more precision based stuff like separating two things close to each other with atmosphere, this won't really work as well because there's just little control of the expanse of the volume so the shader will just bleed into other objects, which isn't really good. A second option is to create a volumetric object and thanks to Blender's new features in the 2.92 alpha, you can create a volume out of any shaped mesh, so you can have a wave mesh and have some volumetric fog conform to that wave shape, or having some, for example, rough steam shaped meshes, and so on. It's really all up to you. The way you do this is to shift A add in an empty through the volume tab and add the mesh to volume modifier under the modifier tab of the empty or of the volume. Then you just need to choose your reference object and done. You just hide your original object and your volumetric object is ready to be played with. Note that in order to scale or move the volume you need to move the original object as well. 
You can choose the density and if you add in a shader for the volume, you can choose the color, how much light is received and so on. And you know what the best part is? It reacts with lighting. This type of volume will require more computing power, but it just allows for more flexibility and realism. I highly recommend this feature for adding atmosphere, fog and so on to your scenes. And that about covers it, honestly. <laughs> These are the tricks I use to give my scenes that kind of extra oomph and more visual interest. Having the ability to move these effects and volumetrics around in the scene is just so much fun and really aids me in my creative process. I hope that you learned a thing or two, like these things just took ages for me to learn so I hope you won't be as lost as I was. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. We've added a little tip jar link in the description and pinned comments. So if you're in a giving mood and want to support the work that we do here on Polycosm, or you just want to fuel our cookie and coffee obsession, we'd appreciate any little bit of help. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.